Hey CFS Warriors, it's Victoria coming to you from the Sea of Cortez. So I want to talk to you about garnering support for yourself. Woo! You know, CFS is such a debilitating illness and it's so critical to have the support of people around us for us to reach recovery. And, um, you know, I've seen marriages dissolve because one partner doesn't understand that it's a real illness. And, you know, people lose their friends because the friends don't understand, they don't get it. And uh, so I just want to talk a little bit about what's helped me in my recovery to gain support from those that are around me. And, you know, when I think about this, I think there are three different circles. And one is your inner circle, one is your mid circle, and one is your outer circle. And so you want to handle that all differently. And I know this seems to be uh, like something that could really deplete your energy. So. I'm aware that it's a challenging thing to do, but it's so worth it. And I think that with using a little ingenuity and creativity, you can find ways to advocate for yourself that won't deplete you. Because I know a lot of people I see in forums, they just give up even trying to explain it to people because they're like, they're never gonna get it. And you know, that's, that's okay when it's someone who's in that outer circle. But I think the inner and mid circles really need to be informed. And a lot of it comes back to us accepting the illness as well and understanding, you know, this is a neurological illness. That's how the World Health Organization classifies it. And now there's so much more research being done with Stanford. So they're beginning to understand some of the things that are going on with the illness that so they don't have a cure right now. Let's start with the inner circle. And so for me, what really helped, because it's so exhausting trying to explain things, was using videos that I found online. And when you take a look at my resources, you'll see Toby Morrison and you'll also see Alex Howard. And those are two guys that have some videos that can really help others understand what's going on with it. Because I know for me, my husband would hear how difficult it was for me to get in the shower and it just couldn't register until he saw these big guys that were talking about the same thing. And so it really is like, oh, well, what's going on here? Everything they're saying is the same thing I hear my wife saying. So um, that can really help whoever is in your inner circle to take a look at some videos, find the resources. One thing that really helped was the Carers Call, which is a part of Secrets to Recovery online resource. And I had my husband listen to that and my mom, and it just gave them the understanding of what I needed and what I was going through. So use other resources. Don't feel like you have to go and convince people of what's going on. So that is with your inner circle, and I just want to mention kids at this time too, because it's really important when you have children for them to understand according to their age what's appropriate and what's going on with you. Um, because obviously you're not available to be there for them in ways that you would want to be, and it's good for them to understand this is a real illness even though mommy doesn't look sick. So another thing that was really helpful was research, you know, just a little bit of Googling, print it out, hand it to somebody and say, here, take a look at this from Stanford. And also Dr. Ihill, uh, her work on mitochondria function. So that's a really important piece to the CFS puzzle. And it helps people understand on a cellular level what's going on with our bodies. Anyway, that's the inner circle. And, you know, I found, I saw a huge turnaround for those that were close to me once I began to understand the illness and then once I began to advocate for myself. You know, of all people we need advocating for because ours is a silent illness. It's an invisible illness. So, um, first we have to come, to come to understand it and respect it and then we can, you know, convince others of it basically. So for the middle uh, circle, this would include people like friends and schools, people that are kind of close to you that you would see on a semi-regular basis or regular basis before, they need some information too. And so videos like those others would be good. You know, it's easy for people, they just don't understand it. But the thing is, it's a difficult illness for anyone to understand. So, you know, I think it's important to give them this information so that they can then respect and in turn support us in ways. You don't want to go on this alone. And all it takes is a little communicating, a little bit of garnering in the other resources to show them, hey, I'm not alone and I'm not a Looney Tune and it's not in my head. So the resources are out there. Um, I just encourage you to get them. And the reason why is because this is going to make a difference for your recovery path. It's going to help you get support. Um, I, I know I had to contact my kids' school and let them know what was going on because your kids may need extra support. 
while they're in school because things are not all as you know they used to be at home. So it's really good because then you can know that you're working with a team. It's not just you on your own trying to support your kids. So the outer circle um, are the people that you don't need to worry about. People that you know are they, they may be business, they may just be social acquaintances. But right now, unless they are going to be a pivotal for your recovery and help support you, there's no reason to even go there and spend energy on that. I know on the way here to uh, Mexico, we were in the airport and we ran into some friends of ours that had no idea I've been struggling to, with this for seven years. Though they would see me out and about in the push and crash years of my recovery. So they saw me in a wheelchair because I use that when I'm in the airport because I can't you know, do those long distances and show up without crashing. So I support myself that way. And I remember just being terrified in the airplane thinking, oh no, they are gonna see me in this wheelchair. When she saw me in the wheelchair, when I was picked up in that and we were going to our next flight, I just, been, I just said to her, I can't do distances. And that's all I said. And she kind of was like, okay, you know, and then we ran into them again at baggage claim and she and her husband both came over and just gave me a hug and just exuded so much love and kindness. And you know, it was great because I didn't feel like I needed to explain anything to her. So I just want to encourage you, you know, uh, a lot of it is that energy that we put out and if we're afraid people are going to judge us and criticize us, you know, we put out that fear. And so I think that we want to be confident in what we have to do for ourselves and know that this is something we are, we are champions. We are warriors. We are not pathetic, you know, couch potatoes. We are fighting for the battle of our lives and you deserve every bit of support you can get. So that's why I really want to encourage you to take the time. You know, it may take you months to pull this off, but that's okay. One little brick at a time to begin to cultivate support that you need. Um, you are worth every single bit of that. You are worth support, you are worth compassion, and you are worth kindness, and you deserve that. So I hope you will reach out for that, and always remember, you are more than a conqueror, and you will conquer CFS.